Tonight is going to be a great night. And the Lord is going to touch your life in Jesus' name. You'll never be the same. If you will connect with the Almighty God tonight, something marvelous, something wonderful, something miraculous and something mysterious is coming your way tonight in Jesus' name. Almighty God, we come to you tonight. I bless your name for your great people here. What a wonderful fellowship we have. Oh Lord, I pray tonight you will open the windows of heaven. Shower your blessings upon your people in Jesus' name. Tonight, all things are possible. You will heal the sick. You will deliver the oppressed. You will save the sinners. You will restore backsliders. In Jesus' name. I thank you because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. I will not release you except you put your hands together for Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. And the good people, let us all sit and you have a seat to sit. Tonight we're looking at the watch of God. And it's a question. And it's a question that demands an answer. And it's a question that came many, many years ago. It's as old, the question is as old as Genesis. But the answer is as new as today. Our God is still the same today. And what he did before, he's still able to do today. Every miracle you have read about in the Bible is possible to day in your very life. In Genesis chapter 18 verse 14 Genesis chapter 18 verse 14 Is anything too hard for the Lord? That is the question. It came to a family. What had happened is Abraham got married to Sarah. Abraham when they, when they first got married, they were very hopeful. They thought they were going to have a child very quickly. A year passed. Two years passed. Ten years went by. And there was no child. In fact, Sarah eventually gave up and said there was no possibility anymore. Just at that time, when the body said impossible, just at that time, when the brain and the mind and everything that could speak, said it was impossible, Almighty God showed up. And just at the time you are thinking in your life that this has become impossible. Just at the time your neighbors are telling you this is impossible. At that moment of time Almighty God shows up. And God is never too late. The Lord is coming to you today. I said the Lord is coming your way today. And don't you ever tell me it is too late. Sarah thought it was too late. Abraham thought it was too late. And God said in that Genesis chapter 18. Reading from verse 9. And they said unto him. Where is Sarah thy wife? Where is your problem? Because the problem was on Sarah. And then Sarah was thinking, the problem has not reached its climax. 
And then God said, where is Sarah, your wife? I'm asking you tonight, where is that child for the problem? Where is your wife for the problem? Where is your husband for the problem? Where is Sarah, thy wife? And he said, behold, in the text. Thank God you are there tonight. And the Lord has come to visit you. You will not miss him. He will not miss you. You on miracle, as you are coming like this, miracle will meet you on the way. And then God declared. He said, by this time next year, Sarah shall have a child. When Sarah had, Sarah laughed. I said, Sarah laughed. And then Sarah said, Me, of all people, miracles may be for others. Spectacular things may be for others. Me, of all people, how can it be? Maybe you are wondering there tonight. And you say, how can it be? And it shall be. How can it be? And it shall be unto you. I said unto you, it's coming your way. Is anything too hard for the Lord at the time appointed? I will return unto thee according to the time of life. And Sarah shall have a son. That's what we're looking at tonight. Is there anything too hard for the Lord? I'm telling you that today, in our city here, people were talking together. This one was telling this, somebody, something else. And he shook his head. Impossible. I'm telling you in London, today, today, somebody talking to another person. And he was, do you know this will happen? And that fellow shook his head. Impossible. Anywhere, everywhere in the world. That's a word in every Miles. Impossible. That's, that's what Sarah said. Me to have a child at this age. We in the family to have a newborn baby. And she laughed and said, Impossible. That word in every mouth. That word God will cut it out of your mouth today. That thing you thought was impossible. That thing you thought will never take place. That miracle you thought you will never see. Today, today. Everybody help me say today. Help me, help me. Tell me out loud today. The miracle is coming your way. Amen. I'm going to divide the message to three parts. Number one, the perplexity of men. You see, Sarah was perplexed. How can it be? How can I have a child? It's too late. She was perplexed. The perplexity of Man. And Abraham was very near. And Abraham did not say, my wife, why are you talking like that? The wife was perplexed. The husband was powerless. Point number two, the powerlessness of man. The powerlessness of man. But thank God, God was nearby. When the woman was perplexed, and the man was powerless, Almighty God said, look around you. Look at the sky. Look at the stars. Look at the sun. Look at the ocean. 
Look at the land. I made every sin out of nothing. Is any sin you had for the Lord? The possibilities with God. The possibilities with God. Number one, the perplexity of men. Number two, the powerlessness of men. Number three, the possibilities with God. I, I come to number one. The impossibilities that men express. The perplexities that men express. And you know, it's, it's not just in the area of childbearing. It's not just in the area of having a child in the family. Almost every area of the life of man, there's perplexity and impossibility. In Jeremiah chapter 13, Jeremiah chapter 13, verse 23, it says, Can the Ethiopian change his skin? Now, uh, you see what the Lord is saying. Uh, the Lord is looking at man. And at Africa in particular. And he's choosing Ethiopia as a symbol, as an example, as illustration of Africa. It's talking about you, about me. And he says, look at man in general. You don't have to even to be a medical doctor. Just look at the skin of man. Can the Ethiopian change his skin? Then you think about his brain. If he cannot change the skin, can he change the brain? You think of his heart. Heart. If he cannot change your skin, can he change his heart? You look at his kidney. If he cannot change his skin, can he change his kidney? You look at his height. He's short, he wants to be tall. If he cannot change the skin, the, the, the smallest part, can he change his is the eyes. You look at his behavior, his character. The, the least of man, the skin. If he cannot change the skin, can he change his behavior, his character? That's why the Lord was asking the question. Can the Ethiopian change his skin? Or the leopard is poor? As you look at the leopard, you see quite a lot of things. You see the wild nature. Or the wild nature nature, the murderous nature that kills. Now, if he cannot change the sports, the color, can he change the wild, violent action nature? You see the instinct of the leopard. The fighting nature, violent nature, of the leopard. Any time that leopard sees another animal, there's something inside running after the other and wanting to kill. Can the leopard change his nature? If he cannot change the color of his skin, can he change his nature? If he cannot change the smallest part, can he change the very deep nature in him? Hey, that's the perplexity of man. It's the perplexity of the whole universe. Can the Ethiopian change his skin? Or the leopard?
patch is sports. <laughs> then may ye also do good that are accustomed to do evil. In Job chapter 14. If you don't have any Bible, I'll just read it to you. Job chapter 14 verse 4. Who can bring a clean sin out of an unclean, not one? The city of man. Look at Adam and Eve. Look at how God created them. Look at their first child. A murderer. Who can bring a clean sin out of your clean? Not one. Look at David, a man after God's heart. Look at his children. Absalom Adonijah. And see how the violence and the murder was there in the family. Who can bring a clean sin out of an unclean? Not one. Look at Isaac. And look at the two sons, Jacob and Esau. Look at Jacob the deceiver. And Esau the destroyer. Who can bring a clean sin out of an unclean? Not one. Look at Samuel. Look at the two children of Samuel. You see, the perplexity of man. And look at Shola. I'm telling you, I'm going to live like an angel. When you see me tomorrow, I will do this. I will do this. Tomorrow becomes today. Okay, I'll do it tomorrow now. Another, another tomorrow will come. And you're still the same like you have ever been. You see, you cannot do the same. Only the Almighty God can perform the miracle of change, of transformation, and tonight is that night for you. Look at Job chapter 25. Job chapter 25. I'm reading verse 4. How then can man be justified with God? Or how can he be clean that is born of a woman? Anybody born of a woman in this world? The perplexity of man. We want to do good, we cannot do it. And what looks impossible, the Lord will make it possible. Let, let, let me show you something. Uh, this is one of the greatest men that ever lived, apart from Jesus. Think about his intelligence. Think about his understanding. Think about his learning. Think about his authority. Think about his willpower. That if anybody can do anything that he determines, this will be the man. This is Saul of Tarsus. He later became Paul. But if he didn't write this down, you will never know that Saul went through the same perplexity. If you didn't talk to me, looking at you the way you are, I will never know that this perplexity is in your life. If you didn't open up your heart, and then discuss with me, the way I look at you, you run, you jump, you sing, you pray, you go to one of the best churches in town, you dress well, you look like a wonderful gentleman, if I didn't talk to you heart to heart, I wouldn't have known the wonderful lady that everybody thinks you are. But now that we're talking together, I can see, I can tell. The perplexity in your heart was the same perplexity in the heart of Saul. In Romans chapter 7, I'm reading there from verse 14. It says, For we know that the law is spiritual. 
But I am canal soldier on the sea. Soldier on the sea. Now he was talking about slavery. And nobody would have thought about Paul like that. That man, he had a letter of authority in his hand. Anywhere he went, he would take them like this because he hated Christ. He threw them into the prison. Nobody knew that Saul himself had a battle he was fighting on the inside. They thought he was Superman. They thought he was a champion. They thought he was a conqueror. They thought he was a courageous man. Just like anybody looking at you. We we'll think that you are all in all. Just like anybody looking at you. We we'll think like you are, you are stronger than Superman. Heavy wage man. We accept that as we know now. As we're looking at you together now. And we're talking together heart to heart. Now we know that the man that looks like a superman is a perplexed man. It must be seen for that which I allow not, that which I do allow not. Verse 15, for what I would that I do not. But what I hate that I do. How many times did he want to change? How many times did he make up his mind? How many times did he say, if I want to do anything, I do it. And he said, not even Satan can stop me. I know the law. You know what he did? All those Ten Commandments, he memorized them. He memorized them. Anytime, any temptation will come. I will bring that commandment out like this. I will speak it and throw it to the temptation. And he say, let that temptation come. Let that Satan come. I know, beyond any shadow of doubt, I am a child of God. I go to the best church in town. I've been baptized in water. I've been confirmed. I'm a lay reader. I'm a preacher in my church. The perplexity of man. That's why it says in verse 15, that which I do, I allow not. For what I would, that I do not. But what I hate, that I do. If then, that, if then I do that, I would not. Verse 16. I consent unto the law that the law is good. Now then, it is no more either do it, but sin that dwelleth in me. You know, as I look at Paul the Apostle, even before he came to Christ, you, you know that man. I, I never, I never knew that the man could ever cry. That the man could ever be sorrowful. Any time he appeared in the public, the man stood his full height and strength. When he stood like this, everybody was held. But the perplexity of men. See the soul. See what he said in verse 24. Oh, wretched man that I am. Oh, wretched man that I am. Who shall deliver me from this body of Death. until you come to God and you are coming to God tonight and then the impossibilities of your life the impossibilities of your character the impossibilities of your behavior tonight is becoming possible number one the perplexity of man number two the powerlessness of 
Man. You know, we see, we see, if I can not do it, maybe so and so can help me. If I cannot change myself, maybe there's somebody that can help me to do it. You know how much money is wasted? So much. On bleaching. That is uh, the Ethiopian wanting to change his color. In some other places where I've gone, I see some ladies, they say, Does the Bible say we cannot change our skin? We will do it. And then they go and take the sin, they call bleach or whatever. And then they put on the on the face. They put on the hand. And then if after some weeks or some months, then you look at them as they are coming. You think uh, this one is another disease. One cheek is almost yellow. The other side is pink. The forehead is reddish. And then the hand is uh, having blisters. And then when you come near, you say, it's even better to be black than to be, to bleach. You will say, things have gone, things have gone in this woman's body. Because they're trying to do what's impossible. And you know, sometimes uh, they want to, they want to try and change the air. And then they stay under the, a, a little hell. Ah, they, they still like a little hell. And the scene is very hot. And they're sweating. And they put a cap of little hell on there. And sometimes I want to go near and say, Madam, what's happening here? What are you, what are you doing? Why this little hell? I'm trying to change how God made me. And then after a few weeks, you have to go under the fire again. Because that thing is not going to give you a permanent solution. But the Lord is saying, what is impossible for man is possible for the Almighty God. And tonight, you will meet that God. I said tonight, you will meet that God. And if you cannot change your skin, how can you change your heart? How can you change your spirit? How can you change your destiny? How can you change your mind? But the Almighty God who created you and he says he has a power in heaven and on earth and, and the only pity is I don't know why people don't call me time what they should just come today they should be wise and come today and say, even if I try many years I cannot do it but there is a God in heaven who can do it for me and because God can do it tonight, tonight, tonight I will come to the Lord he will do it for me hey, look at this this is 2nd Kings now the powerlessness of men in 2nd Kings chapter 6 I'm reading from verse 26 and verse 27 and as the king of Israel was passing by upon the wall. There cried a woman unto him, saying, Help my king, my lord, O king. And you know these people, there are some people that do not know that Kings and leaders also have their own problems. There are people that do not know that elders in villages, elders in cities, they have their own problems too. When they become perplexed, they go to men and women like themselves. They, they, don't, they don't understand only God can do this. 
This problem you have, only God can solve this problem. This heart of yours, only God can change this heart. This behavior, this character, only God can change this behavior and character. This peculiarity in your life that you have fasted about, that you have rolled on the ground about, that you beat yourself and punish yourself about, that you say, if I ever do that sin again, I will punish myself. And the more you punish yourself, you walk on maybe pebbles on the ground. You quit sleeping on the bed, you sleep on the bare ground. And then you will not eat for some days. This flesh, this flesh, I will punish it. And the more you have done it, you have done it. You know, you still go back into that table again. Oh, wretched man that I am who shall deliver me from this body of death. And so this uh, woman came to the king. And he said, if the Lord do not help thee, when shall I help thee? There's no help in the other man. There's no help in the king. There's no help in the people of the world. There's no help in a man like you, like me. Nobody can replace God in your life. Nobody can be your savior apart from Jesus. Nobody else can be your redeemer apart from Christ. Nobody can save you from your sin. There is no help anywhere. Where? The king said, if the Lord does not help you, from whence will I help you? Your help today is in God. I said your help tonight is in God. In Psalm 108. Psalm 108. Verse 12. Give us help from trouble. Almighty God will come to you tonight. Give us help from trouble. For vain is the help of man. That says it. That has settled everything. Vain is the help of man. In fact, the psalmist knew this very much. That he said it again another time. Psalm 60 verse 11. Psalm 60 verse 11. Give us help from trouble for pain is a help of man and, and you know David who wrote this he knew many people more than you know he knew the great, he knew the rich. He knew the villager, he knew the city dweller. He knew the cabinet, he knew the citizens. He knew the men, he knew the women. He knew the people that were bragging on useless power. And then, after he had been disappointed by all of them, he said, oh God, I'm coming back to you. Give us help in trouble. For pain is the help of man. You know what some people do? You know where they go? You know where they seek help? Psalm 15. 115. 115. 115. From verse 4. Their idols are silver and gold. The work of men's hands. They have mouths, but they cannot speak. Eyes they have, but they see not. They have ears, but they hear not. No seas have they, but they smell not. They have hands, and they handle not. Feet have they, but they walk not. 
neither speak they through their throat. They that make them alike unto them. So is everyone that trusted in them. You know there are people that are good and trust in wood and stone and all these idols. And sometimes the people that you go and trust in goats and chicken. When the goat was alive, the goat could not help them. It's when you kill the goat, they think the goat will help them. When, when the chickens were alive, the chickens could not help them. It's when they twist and strangulate uh, the head of the chicken that now the chicken will help them. There's no help in man. But thank God he's here tonight. Almighty God is here tonight. Our help is in the Almighty God. And God will help you in your situation tonight in Jesus' name. You know, as I talk about this perplexity of men, I, I was looking at the Bible. And, and there is a verse of scripture. It's trying to tell us how the help of man will always fail. Will always be inadequate. That except you come to God. And you will carry that problem for years, for decades, for centuries. Isaiah chapter 28. Reading from verse 20. Isaiah 28 verse 20. Isaiah 28 verse 20. 28 verse 20. 28, 20. It, it is so important. I want you to see this. The perplexity of men. The powerlessness of men. That all the help you think you can get for yourself, they will not work. But there is a God that is coming to you tonight. And he says, is there anything you had for me? Your problem will not pass God. God will solve your problem tonight. Jesus died for you. Why are you wasting your time on solutions that will not work? Isaiah 28 verse 20. For the bed is shorter than a man can stretch himself on. Can you think of a man that's about six feet tall? He has walked all during the day. He has gone up and down. Now he's tired and he's weary. And now he wants to rest at night. He says, I just want a convenient place to rest. So I can recover my strength. And then the bed he has is about three and a half feet and he is six feet. For the bed is shorter than a man can stretch himself on it. Not only that, the covering narrower than he can wrap himself in it. That's all man can do for himself. It's inadequate. It's so short, it's so small that he doesn't solve any problem. That's why God is telling you why are you suffering unnecessarily? Don't you know the solution to your problem is in the hand of the Almighty God? Number one, the perplexity of men. Number two, the powerlessness of men. Number three, thank God for number three. It's because of this number three we have hope. It's because of this number three we stop crying. It's because of this number three there's excitement within our heart. It's because of this excitement and because of this point number three we say now I can pick up courage. It's because of this point number three I say give me chance I want 
want to see Jesus tonight. It's because of this point number three. I say, now I can sing. Now I can rejoice because all hope is not lost. What's point number three? The possibilities with God. The possibilities with God. I want to announce to you tonight. Everything you have found impossible until this day. As you come to Christ tonight. It's possible. I said it's possible. Tonight is that night. When that terrible word impossibility is cancelled out of your life. Your heart can change. Your life will change. Your character will change. Your behavior will change. Your body will change. And your job will change. Your profession will change. Every bad thing around you will change to become better in Jesus' name. Jeremiah chapter 32. Jeremiah chapter 32. I'm reading from verse 26 and verse 27. Then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah, saying, Behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything you had for me? I am the God of all flesh. What you have carried to the mountain, you have carried to the valley. Bring it to the Lord tonight. I am the God of all flesh. What you have taken to the forest and what you have taken overseas and there's no solution, bring it to the Lord tonight. I am the God of all flesh. Your child you have carried over here, you have carried over there and the child is still like a swallowed a demon. Bring that child here tonight. I'm the God of all flesh. And then your character, you say, I don't know what I'm going to do. One day I'll just kill myself and die because there's no purpose to live in. Bring yourself to the Lord tonight. I'm the God of all flesh. This woman, I don't know whether I'm going to continue with this woman or not. Maybe I'll just, you know, run away from home and just leave her there because... See, after all these years, no child sickness upon sickness. Bring your family to the Lord tonight and the God of all flesh. Your life is upside down. You have tried everything you want to try. And yet, it appears there is no change. Why are you ashamed? Why are you shy? Now that you have an opportunity and the Lord is calling you, He made the heavens and the earth. And he says to the God of all flesh, and with him all things are possible. Why will you not, with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, just make up your mind tonight? Solution is here in the hand of God. I'm going to go to God tonight. Mark chapter 10. Mark chapter 10. In Mark chapter 10. You know there were people that were thinking it's impossible for some people to get saved. They were so bad. They were so evil. And then the disciples were saying, who then can be saved? Mark chapter 10 verse 26. And they were astonished out of measure. They were surprised beyond description. And then they said, saying among themselves, who then can be saved? If the rich don't easily get saved, who then can be saved? If the intelligent, the intellectuals are not easily saved, who then can be saved? If those who have been going to, they were born inside the church. They were baptized eight days after birth. They were 
were confirmed and then they have been paying their church deal. If with all the Bible they know, with all the churches they go, if they're still this bad, who then can be saved? It was then the old Jesus Christ told them. And Jesus looking upon them says, With men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God all things are possible. It was after that in Luke chapter 19. But for us to know that what Jesus said is true. There was a man that nobody could, nobody thought he could ever get saved. His name is Zacchaeus. He heard that Jesus was passing by. He couldn't join the crowd. He was a short man. And he was uh, so unfortunate in life. Nobody wanted to associate with him. But he said, can God solve my problem? Can my sins be forgiven? Can I be saved? Can this heaven I'm looking at up there? And the heaven I've been dreaming about up there? Can I catch there? He said, I will want to see Jesus. And he ran ahead. And he climbed up a tree. See, I'm, I'm not even telling you to climb a tree. I'm not telling you to try at your age to start and climb in a sycamore tree. All I tell you is that if you want this change and transformation, that you should just rise up and call. And men can come, women can call. If I had told you before you can get this salvation, you must climb the tree. Then you will have an excuse. You will say, I have never climbed a tree in my life. And you say, at my age, how can that be the condition of being saved? But Zacchaeus, as old as you are, older than you are, he even ran ran ahead of the crowd and then he climbed up the tree and he was looking he was looking for Jesus he wasn't looking for Peter he wasn't looking for Mary he was just looking and then Jesus got there where he was God knows you tonight he knows you want something tonight he knows you need something tonight you know that there are different ways of calling somebody's name. If a policeman came to your house and he has a warrant to arrest you and he has your name, there's a way he will call your name. If that policeman takes you to the prison and the warder, what do they call them? The prison warden there. And he's calling the role. You know when he calls your name, there's a way he will call your name. If they charge you to call and the judge is standing in there and he's wearing red garments and then his face is turned and then he puts your case in his hand that is the way he will call your name but Jesus is not judge he's savior he's the lover of your soul when Jesus got there. Nobody calls Zacchaeus like that before. He says, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down. Come down. I know what you're looking for. You're looking for solutions to your problem in life. I am the solution to your problem. You're looking for the right scene and the right place from the right person. And Zacchaeus came down. And Jesus did not preach one hour message to him. But the man immediately began to confess. He said, Lord, half of my goods I give to the Lord. This salvation is more than property. This salvation is more than all the money I've stolen. If I've taken anything from any man by wrong accusation, I pay him back fourfold. And Jesus said, This day 
the salvation come to your heart. This day, this can be your day. I said this can be your day. I said this is your day. The powers of darkness, it will break away from your life. All the guilt, all the condemnation of sin, he will take away. This day, his salvation come to your house. I know you want to come to Christ. I said, I'm, I know you are eager to come to Christ. Can I tell you before you come, he will deliver you. He will heal you. He will forgive your sin. He will put joy in your heart. He will take your mountains away. We're coming back to Jeremiah chapter 32. Jeremiah chapter 32. And now I'm reading verse 17. Jeremiah chapter 32 verse 17. Ah, Lord God, behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretch out arms. And there is nothing too hard for thee. And there is nothing too hard for thee. Myself, I bundle myself, I throw myself into the hands of Jesus. No problem in my life, no difficulty in my life. Jesus specializes in solving problems. And as I come to Christ, all my problems are gone. In your life, as you come to Christ, sin gone, condemnation gone, guilt gone, oppression. Gone. The power of Satan broken. Sickness is driven away. And then today, a new life will begin. Today, a new life will begin. You will say, Is this me? Wonderful. Everything has changed. If any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Are you the person I'm talking about? Are you the one I'm talking about? Who is the, who is the lucky person today? Who is this fortunate person today? That all, every evil in your life, the broom of heaven will sweep everything away. All the calamities of your life, the Lord will sweep everything away. Who is the person I'm talking about? I said who is the person I'm talking about? Who is the lucky person? person today, the fortunate person today, that Jesus has been looking for you, is calling your name. If you are the person I'm talking about, who are you sitting down? Why don't you rise up and say, Jesus is me. Jesus is me. Jesus is me. Then he says, come down. Make haste and come down. You're raising up your hand, and you're saying, Jesus is me. Salvation for me. Forgiveness for me. All my bad luck you want to take away. All the evil things in my life you want to take away. The Lord is calling you, come. 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 You're raising up your hand. And you're standing up. And you're saying, yes, Lord, is me. Yes, Lord, is me. Come on here now. The Lord is waiting for you. Come out of the crowd. If you are hearing me, say yes. If you hear me, say yes. Okay, the Lord is calling you. Get away from where you are. And come to the front here. The Lord is saying, He wants to forgive you. He wants to take away your sin. He wants to take away your condemnation. This is the day. This is the day. If you come with your heart, you come with your mind, young people, Older people, elderly man, why don't you come? You need forgiveness 
quicker than everybody else. You need salvation sooner than everybody else. Old man, yes, just gently get her up and come. Old woman, just gently come up and come. The certificate does not solve problems. In fact, the more certificates you have, the more problems you have in life. Because the people of the world, they will not leave you alone. Come and hide in Christ. Come and take refuge in Christ. The Lord is the one that can forgive your sin. With man, this is impossible. You cannot, you cannot help yourself. You cannot change your life. You cannot turn yourself around. Your salvation is in Christ. Keep on coming, keep on coming. From the middle of there, you can come. From the back over there, you can come. The Lord is calling you. As you come to the front, just report yourself to God. Report yourself to God. Say, I am the man. I am the woman. I find it impossible. I cannot change my skin. I cannot change my language. I cannot change my intonation. I cannot change my behavior. I cannot change my character. I cannot change my fighting. I cannot change my adultery. I cannot change my smoking. I cannot change my drinking. I cannot change my evil. I cannot change my stealing. I cannot change my hatred. I cannot change my life. Turn me around. Transform my life. Keep on coming, keep on coming, keep on coming. The Lord is waiting for you. Come with your heart. Come with your heart. Come with a great decision that you know you are coming to Christ tonight and you will not turn back away from the Lord anymore. You cannot change yourself. Only Christ can change you. Everyone tonight, the Lord is giving you a chance. What you cannot do for yourself, the Lord wants to do for you. Why don't you call upon the Lord? Lord, Lord, I come. Lord, I come. Lord, I come. Change me. I cannot change myself. I cannot make myself better. I come to you tonight. Old man, don't die in this helpless condition. Old woman, don't die in this helpless condition. You cannot change yourself. Only the Almighty God can change you. Can forgive your sin. Can turn your life around. And that Lord is here tonight. Yes, He will heal those who are sick. He will deliver those who are oppressed. He will also save those who are sinners. Why don't you call upon him tonight and say, Lord, I come. Lord, I come. Lord, I come. Change my life. I surrender my heart to you. I surrender my life to you. I surrender my personality unto you. Make a total change in my life. In Jesus' name we pray. All those of you who have come to Christ, I want to assure you, anybody that comes to Christ, no matter how bad your life has been, no matter what the devil is trying to tell you, no matter the evil that you have done, Jesus said he will receive everyone that comes. He will forgive everyone that comes every bad thing that has been written concerning your life everything is cleansed away the seeds are blotted away because you have made up your, up your mind to come to Christ and you say Lord receive me the Lord will not reject you Right now, he's forgiving all your sins. Right now, he's giving you his salvation. He died for you. It was because of you he died. And now as you say, Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me. That's all. That's all. That's all. 
your forgiveness. Can I pray with you? I said, can I pray with you? Why don't you raise up your hand? It's like you're saying, Lord Jesus, I surrender all. I surrender my heart. I surrender my mind. This is my bad character. I surrender. I'm now in the hands of Jesus. Lord, I cannot save myself. I surrender myself to you. Lord, save me. Lord, save me. And he says, Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for your love and mercy. We have seen the impossibility of man, the perplexity of man, and we have seen the powerlessness of man. That's why all these people, men and women, young and old, that's why they have come to you. And Lord, as they come, we know you will not reject anyone. Lord, we pray, forgive them in Jesus name what they have found impossible until today make it possible forgive them cleanse them change their lives let there be a miracle of transformation in Jesus name Lord, I pray your spirit will be a witness in their hearts. Now their sins are forgiven. Now they are children of God. A new life has begun in them right here today. Confirm it in every life in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord, because I know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And Everybody said, Can I tell you something? Heaven is rejoicing because of you. Angels are clapping because of you. Yeah, God has written your name in the book of life. And it says, Welcome home. Welcome home. Welcome home. You are not a child of the devil anymore. Now you are a child of God. And you will never go back to those evil things oh, anymore. It is your miracle night. And the Lord has confirmed it already. Nothing is too hard for the Lord. Any problem you are brought here tonight, the Lord will solve the problem. Don't look at other people, you are the candidate for miracle tonight. At the park, in the middle, in the front, on the sides, anywhere you are, the power of God is coming to you now. Can we stand up to receive a miracle? Everywhere, everywhere miracles have been already. Everywhere miracle. Nothing impossible with God. With our God, all things are possible. Are you ready? Identify the problem where it is. Lay one hand on it and raise up the other hand. When I pray, the power of God will touch your life tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because of the assurance you have given us that there is nothing too hard for you. I pray for everyone here tonight. Lord, I pray, send forth your power. Power now in Jesus' name. Every pain, every sickness, every infirmity and every weakness, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray from the top of their head to the tip of their toe. 
Your healing power will flow through them now in Jesus' name. All the swelling in their body, take it away. HIV AIDS, take it away. Tuberculosis, take it away. All the pains and all the suffering, take it away. And those who are lame, I pray your power will touch them now. Those withered hands and those lame legs, I pray that the power of God will touch you right now. Be healed and be made whole in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for those who are deaf and dumb. I pray that you open their deaf ears and lose their tongue tongues. Make them hear, make them speak in Jesus' name. For those who are blind, I remove the bandage of the devil. Whatever is covering your sight, I remove it right now. And I command those blind eyes be opened in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray for more for a mother's to be. They are married and they are looking for children. Tonight is your night. I command barrenness come out in Jesus' name. Everywhere where we are connected, release your power. Release the healing. Release the deliverance. Let there be miracles everywhere. Confirm it now. It has started already. Confirm it to Lord. Thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said.